For thousands of years, people have practiced meditation for spiritual, emotional, and physical well-being. But from a scientific perspective, how exactly does meditating affect your body? Does it really do anything? It all starts in the brain. During meditation, brain scans see increased activity in regions directly correlated with decreased anxiety and depression, along with increased pain tolerance. The default mode network, in particular, is activated when one's mind is at rest and not focusing on the outside world, and has been found to improve memory, self-awareness, and goal setting. Want to be more caring to your friends and family? When scientists compared the brains of Buddhist monks to new meditators, they found the region of the brain associated with empathy to be much more pronounced in the monks. It also literally changes your brain waves, and we can measure these frequencies. Meditators have higher levels of alpha waves, which have been shown to reduce feelings of negative mood, tension, sadness, and anger. And if that wasn't enough, it also physically changes our brain shape and size. Studies found that after eight weeks of a meditation program, gray matter was more dense in areas associated with learning, memory processing, and emotion regulation. And yet the amygdala, which deals with stress, blood pressure, and fear, had decreased gray matter. When we look at the entire body, not only do we see decreased blood pressure, but it can also increase the variability of your heart rate. And while this may sound harmful, it actually plays a critical role in properly transporting oxygen and carbon dioxide throughout your body. Think you're getting sick? In a study where both meditators and non-meditators were given the flu virus, meditators were able to produce a greater number of antibodies and had increased immune function. If we go a little deeper, we can even see changes on a cellular level. Your chromosomes have protective protein complexes called telomeres, which help reduce damage to your DNA and lower cell death. And a shortened telomere length has been linked to several diseases such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, and cancer. Amazingly, when cancer survivors completed a meditation program, their bodies showed significant increases in telomere length. It's believed that psychological intervention, particularly decreasing stress, has a direct effect on the enzyme telomerase, which has been shown to counteract shortening by adding DNA to the shrinking telomeres. Of course, meditation is not a substitute for other medical advice or a healthy lifestyle. We don't want you leaving this video thinking it will cure cancer. But much like hitting the gym can grow your muscles and increase your overall health, it seems that meditation may be a way of working out your brain with extra health benefits. And since your brain controls, well, all of you, why not relax and say, um, every once in a while. Good morning. The power of meditation, the power of being in the moment, the power of being in absolutely very stressful moments, because that is what has been happening here for the last, I don't know, 25 minutes uh, or 30 minutes. Uh, our platform, I don't really understand all this and don't need to. There are people way smarter than me here working on these things, but um, I do know whatever you experienced this morning is an external problem. Like the streaming platform, I think I'm saying this right, that we typically use was not working. And so uh, kudos to the staff team and the volunteers that just uh, make stuff happen here. My name's Andrea Smith. I'm really stressed out and addled right now. So I'm just going to stay seated for a few minutes because I was practicing what I preach, which this morning we're going to talk about being in the current moment, being in the present moment. Like, where are you right now? What do you feel? What do you see? Uh, Dr. Lori Santos is a Yale professor, and she started this course at Yale called The Psychology of Well-Being, and she has 10 basic principles that lead us into being happier people. And in a time when we, as a world, need some happiness, we thought, as a West community, that we would talk to you and try to teach you some of the ways, and teach ourselves some of the ways that we truly could just be happier. And so last week we talked about the fact that we control more of our circ we control more of our happiness than we think we do and that circumstances don't necessarily define our happiness. Uh, we think that they do, but actually if we will acknowledge that we get to make a choice about being happy, we'll come to the realization that uh, we can rise above and work through and get through anything. And so that was last week. And then ironically, today is talking about uh, being in the present moment and meditating and not being anxious for what is yet to come and worried about what's yet to come, but just, just being right here and right now. And so uh, we needed our energy to dissipate a little, our anxious energy. And so now we are ready to worship together and 
it's going to be a little different today. So I want you, during this next song, I want you to find just a really comfortable place. I'm going to talk for just a few minutes and share some scriptures with you about anxiety and worry. And then we are going to do a guided meditation together. The reason that we're doing that this morning is not because I didn't want to preach. It is because... uh, we make this excuse that we don't have time to meditate because it requires us, you know, sitting down and and taking some very intentional steps to connecting with the Spirit of God that lives in each of us. And so I figured if you had blocked out an hour this morning uh, that we would use that time to meditate and that way you can't say you don't have time if you'll do it I promise you'll find that it's just it's really this powerful powerful experience and so uh, find yourself a very comfy place right now while we watch So uh, it's such a perfect song that the worship team chose. Uh, You work all things together for my good. If we would remember that, then it would be so much easier to stay in the present moment. Uh, What we find when our minds wander and what Dr. Dr. Santos' research has shown is that when our minds wander, even if it's like thinking about positive things like a future vacation or something like that, when we're focused on things other than the here and the now, our brains do this really weird thing and uh, it, it just gets us distracted and disconnects us from the things that happen inside of us that cause us to be and feel happy. And it is ironic, and the way that we can tie that into our faith is that we can understand that we are taught not to worry, not to be anxious, and to be in the present moment. That when, there's like, our technology's making noises, and so sorry, it's okay. Uh, I was like, the speakers are getting ready to like explode or something, sorry. Um. When we don't worry about things and when we are in the present moment, then uh, God ends up working all things together for good. So a few weeks ago, uh, actually around July 15th, my CPA sent me an email and she's like, okay, it's time to meet. It was my first time filing taxes as a single person and uh, clergy taxes are very, very confusing and bad. Uh, something like we have to pay double social security and so we really, it's its just a challenge and I've been saving money all year. I knew this was going to come and so I had a certain amount saved and so when my CPA sent me the email I wrote her back and I'm like so how much am I going to owe and so what she wrote back uh, I had planned on like a you know several thousand I did not plan on it being over ten thousand and so when she wrote me back and said uh, well it's going to be over ten thousand around ten thousand I'm like oh Oh my, well that's not good. So I practiced being in the present moment uh, because this was on a Saturday and I'm like, there's nothing I can do about it now. You know, um, I have a financial planner that I've been using and I I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to have to figure it out on Monday. So I stayed in the present moment. I was actually pretty impressed that I didn't let it totally derail uh, my whole weekend and my Sunday morning focus. And so Monday morning I I got up and I'm like, all right, today is the day we've got to deal with this. And so I met with her and and she shared with me that I needed to make this payment then and then we could figure it out. And I was like, okay, I've got to figure out how to come up with several more thousand dollars. I didn't want to make payments to the IRS. And I started looking at my budget, which I actually have. And I'm like, okay, if I take this and I take this, it still didn't add up. And I thought, okay, well, there's, there's one thing that I actually always hold sacred, which is my tithe. And I 
believe if I ask you to financially support the church and the mission and the vision that we have, uh, that I should too, right? And that I should lead sacrificially. So I do tithe, which is 10% of my income. And I was like, you know, that's a lot of money. I could, I could just for a few, I did that little bargaining thing with God. I'm like, I could just take that for a few months and, and then figure out the tax thing and, and that would be okay. And I prayed about it all the way into the office. And when I got here, I had this idea. I'm like, okay, I forgot that I invested some money when I sold my home. And I looked up my investment and sure enough, the investment amount had increased the exact, and I mean this seriously, the exact amount of my taxes. It actually uh, brought tears to my eyes because I was reminded that even when things seem overwhelming and money is a challenge for me, that was a challenge for me learning to do all that by myself, even when we're in those moments that we feel absolutely overwhelmed and are riddled with anxiety and wor worry, if we'll just trust that, you know, there's, there's always a path forward. If we trust that God will work all things together for good, we'll find a way. And uh, that was proven that day. I want you to take a look at the scripture verse. Uh, it's some words that Jesus shared with those who were listening to him teach. Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. Don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. You know, I've been in ministry 24 years, and I've seen a lot of stuff. And the thing that always amazes me is that regardless of what difficulty people are facing, they do make it through it. God does give us all that we need. It just doesn't necessarily feel that way sometimes. I want us to look, I wanted us to read that passage first. And, and Lindsay, can we go back and look at that verse one more time? Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. So that means we need to be in the present moment. What is God doing right now? And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God's going to help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. Now, those were Jesus' words, but look at what he said right before he said, pay attention to the now. If God gives such attention to the appearance of wildflowers, most of which are never even seen, don't you think he'll attend to you? Don't you think God will take pride in you and do God's best for you? What I'm trying to do here is get you to relax, to not be so preoccupied with getting so that you can respond to God's giving. Isn't that interesting? Not be so preoccupied with getting that we can be aware and in the moment of what God is giving. People who don't know God and the way God works fuss over these things, but you know both God and how God works so steep your life in God reality, God initiative, and God provisions. Don't worry about missing out. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. So how do we do that? Well, meditating, meditating is a powerful thing to do. And so that's why I want you for the next 16 minutes, we are going to meditate together. This is what is called a guided meditation. There's lots of apps and, and things that you can subscribe to or YouTube has a lot of powerful guided meditations. So I want you just to sit back or lie down wherever you are and I want us to do this guided meditation together and then we'll close in prayer. You are about to embark on a guided meditation journey. Over the next few minutes, I will guide you into a deep state of relaxation, where you will experience a wonderful calmness and meditative state of mind.
this time is for you and you alone. You don't need to do anything except relax and allow yourself to have this time. You may wish to close your eyes or watch the screen or switch between both. It doesn't matter which. Just do whatever feels right for you. You are completely in control, and if at any time during the meditation you wish to return to your awakened state, you can do so simply by opening your eyes. Breathe in deeply. Exhale fully. Breathe in deeply. Exhale fully. Allow the sound of the waves to calm your mind. Breathe in deeply. Exhale fully. You may notice that thoughts and internal mental chatter are happening inside your mind. This is completely normal. These thoughts will begin to quiet down as you concentrate on listening to the sounds of the waves. As you listen to each wave coming in, you will find your mind gently begins to quiet. Breathe in deeply. Exhale fully. Breathing in cool, refreshing air. Exhaling hot, tense air. Breathe in deeply. Exhale fully. You may wish to close your eyes now, as you begin to feel more and more relaxed. Allow the sounds of the ocean to wash over you. 
bringing you closer to the infinite source of energy within you. Allowing yourself to be in total peace with your surroundings. Now as you find yourself feeling more and more relaxed, I am going to count down from 5 to 0. As I count each number, you will feel more and more relaxed until you reach a sense of complete and wonderful relaxation. Five, five. feeling more relaxed. Four, four, allowing the sound of the waves to calm your mind. Three, three. wonderfully relaxed. Two, two, two. so deeply relaxed. One, one, your mind is calm. Zero, feel the wonderful sense of deep relaxation. Allow the sound of the waves to continue relaxing your whole body. Take a few moments to enjoy this wonderful experience.
you may wish to remain in this deeply relaxed state for a while after this recording has ended, in which case you don't need to do anything right now. When you are ready to resume your day, simply take a few deep breaths and open your eyes.
So the odds of us doing meditation for 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes every day, I understand are not very good, but we do challenge you this week to really be intentional about living in the present moment, not worrying about tomorrow, not thinking about the past, just being in the present moment, aware of where you are, what you feel, what the circumstances are around you, like are you sitting or standing, and who are you with, are you fully present with them in that moment, and uh, we're going to send out daily guided meditations that are going to be three to five minutes every day this week that we challenge you to be a part of. You know, it's really interesting, the power of this, and you can go back and read the writings of the early church fathers and mothers, and those who practiced meditation. They felt just this extreme sense of peace regardless of what hurdles and obstacles they were facing. It's also really interesting to remember and this is one of the most fascinating statements I think of Jesus that we often overlook. Jesus said the same power that I have it is in you. So we have that divine energy that lives in us just like Christ did and we just miss it because we're so busy Uh, And our minds are so busy and scattered and and we just forget. So may this week, may we be intentional about being in the present moment and claiming that power that lies within us. It is then that we have that faith-based, God-given, spirit-driven power that we can be truly happy. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, will you fill us with your presence? May we experience it and feel it deeply in our souls may we remember that we are called and empowered to be at one with you and you give us all that we need may we live as a people of happiness and a people of peace thank you for being a god that gives us all we need amen Take a listen to the song and type any questions you have for TalkBack. You can text those to the number you've seen on your screen.
So first, I want to say, Josh, we really are sorry that you just cannot ever seem to have a Sunday off without us calling you. They really were frantically working for minutes trying to figure out the solution and troubleshoot uh, before we called. So uh, West people... uh, Your staff, they are working so hard, all of them, in the middle of just the most challenging time uh, to be in ministry, I believe. And so uh, if you you ever have a spare minute, I just invite you to email them or text them. Text them all and tell them thank you and that they make a difference. It's it's very isolated ministry right now, not being with you uh, in person on Sundays, and it's really lonely. And so uh, they need to hear from you. And I just encourage you to tell them thank you because they're all working so hard and balancing so many things. And so thank you guys for troubleshooting and pivoting. And thank you. Uh, Dawn's like, they stuck in there. I was like, okay, it's 8 after 10. They're going to be like out on the water or at the grocery store by now. They're going to be so done with us. And when we finally went live, she shared the numbers. And so you stayed. So thank you. We are grateful. Uh, We want you to stay tuned for Amped. Lindsay and her team, they do an amazing job. It's so funny. And it's for children and adults apparently and so we invite you to stay tuned for that and then text us any questions you have about anxiety and worry Uh, last night I did a wedding uh, officiated a wedding it was a beautiful experience for a dear friend and uh, went to a reception and in my 24 years of ministry I've never stayed at a reception from start to finish and I danced I don't dance and I was sober so you know there's that and uh, it was the most freeing thing ever to dance and to just enjoy being in the moment so this week be in the moment and we do hope you dance go in peace